play. Let that music play. Let that beautiful riff play. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. I love the setup back there. Thank you. Very cool. Where are you uh, zooming in from? This is my studio in my basement at home here. And uh, it's a pleasure to be at. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been interesting listening to you. It's the, uh, the plagiarism thing. I always thought Love Gun sounded like Children of the Grave. Oh, but all right. I'm not, we're not going to do it while you're on because I want. This is all about you. But when we get when we're done with you, we're gonna let's we'll get that queued up. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's a lot of those things over the years. So thank I appreciate you throwing that one out there. Um, yeah. And and you know it's great. So is that where all the magic happened on the new record there in your home studio? Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, last year when COVID hit, it was really, you know, everybody was just tied into their own home studios. I, uh, my guitarist, Tommy Cook, and my bass player, Kevin McCarthy, we spent a lot of time down here ironing out, ironing out the first part of All Terrain, but the, um, the end result came about as COVID hit and everybody was really working from their home studios. But this is, uh, you know, this is where I, I edited everything. I, I basically wrote everything down here, but, uh, but putting it together and accepting all the parts came from everybody else's studio, and it was, it was quite a strange process. But we got the job done. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, and we're all adjusting, you know, creatively um, to new situations. And you know, what's funny? Uh, now everyone just heard just a, a small taste of the album. Just that those tasty, heavy riffs with the most unlikely name for an album: Mother's Day. <laughs> what, <laughs> what inspired that, bro? So, so the inspiration for this band actually started like 30 years ago when I was living in Boston. I was out there. I was working with vocalist Zach Stevens. Sure. We had uh, we had a metal band called Wicked Witch. The guitarist Matt Leff. Matt and I jammed all the time. I recorded. I've got like 25 90 minute cassettes full of him and I playing. And and there was this one riff that he played one time and only once and for some reason i dubbed this riff mother's day so this was uh this was kind of the the working title for this album and it stuck so all these years later when i came around to actually writing this and putting this all together the song is about mother earth so everybody has a uh, everybody assumes it's about my mother uh my mother's name is alta ah so well that's where that name came into play uh, Alta, you know, means alto, means higher, means means elevated. So I went with Alta Rain. Um, yeah, I thought the name sounded really cool. The word rain actually ties into the meanings of my my name and my sister's name. So those two words together, I thought just just fit the project perfectly. But the name Mother's Day, yes, is as heavy as the record is. I, I think maybe yeah. this is a little a little <laughs> maybe, maybe a little misleading, but but nonetheless, when you hear the song, I think you get it. Yeah, well, and it also it keeps you in the will for sure. You know, don't tell don't tell Alta that's not about her. Let's, <laughs> you know, and just in case you in case you have to move back home uh, if this pandemic keeps going, God forbid. But um, yeah, it's just such a it's such a cool project. And and let me formally introduce you to Natalie Cuomo, who's a Hi. funny comedian and a guest host with me today. I've Hi. known I've known. Hi, how are you? <laughs> yep, there, there she is. Um, and you, you you know you talked about some of the guys in your band uh, there, and I wanted to ask you if this was a um, if this is a formal band project, or or did you sort of just hand select these people um, to 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 uh, you know just to do this album? Now these guys, five of the member, or the other four members of the band are actually from my hometown, and when I started putting this thing together. I remember I was on tour with TSO and I, I presented some of these ideas to Joel Hoekstra. And, you know, he said, Jeff, you should bring in this person, you should bring in that person, you should, you know, just throwing out some ideas. I really wanted to keep this thing local. I wanted to have access to the people I was working with. Uh, in the event that we want to do live shows, I mean, instead of flying in half a dozen people to try to do a show, it, it just makes everything so much easier. But the bottom line is, everybody that I worked with on this record, Tommy Cook, Kevin McCarthy, Colin Holloway, and Zach Hamilton, they're all fantastic players. They all bought, bought into what I was thinking uh, as far as the ideas, the lyrics, the, you know, musically, the direction. Everybody really loved what was going on. So this worked great. Um, the sixth member of the band is Jane Mangini, 
who who plays keyboards with TSO also. Okay. Um, I've known Jane for close to twenty years, and we've we've always talked about doing a project. So when Tommy and Kevin and I had this thing pretty much put together, I presented this to Jane, and she just loved it. And she was the secret ingredient to this project. You know, she she, she came in added some amazing keyboard parts, really elevated the sound of the band, took it into you know a little bit more of a progressive direction, yeah. but also still keeping it just as melodic and heavy as it was when we first started. So it's a, it's a great combination of people. And, and like I said, the, the fact that I have access to these guys anytime. You know, yeah. they all live five, five miles from me, so it works out great. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's interesting that you mentioned that because there are there's a few people doing that because we have been so kind of, you know, locked into where you know we live and and, and not be able to go anywhere. Um, you know, I had Todd Latore from Queens right on. He made a great album with his best friend in Florida by that lives right by him. So everyone's kind of picking from the local talent, which is a, a cool thing. And Jeff, you know, what's interesting too is like, you know, you don't see a, a many band projects be driven necessarily by uh, a, the drummer. Of, of a band um, are there guys that that you know that have done this that were inspiration to you or was this just you know something that you've always kind of had in mind I mean kind of alluded to that yeah I've been thinking about this for a long time sadly sadly this this came around several years ago I was actually going through some of these cassettes and I mentioned Matt left the guitar player that I had worked with he he came down with cancer and he just <sighs> He, he got to a point where he could no longer play. We talked about this music and, you know, could I use this? Could I, could I take this somewhere? And he gave me the green light on this. Uh, we lost Matt about a year and a half ago. I'm sorry. So, thank you. And, uh, and he was just fantastic. But this was something that I thought, you know, I really wanted to try to get something made out of this music before Matt passed. Oh. Uh, secondly... I'm not a kid anymore, <laughs> so it's like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this, I, I need to get on this and get this done. And and honestly, yeah, stepping out from behind the drum kit and, and being the lyricist and the producer and the writer and you know all of the above, this is my first time doing this. And to your point, not a lot of drummers have taken this role and and kind of led the charge. But but like I said, the, the people that I had have, have involved in this really helped me pieced this together, understood what I was doing. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been in some fantastic bands. You've mentioned them before. Metal Church with Kurt Vandehoff, uh, Sabotage, John Oliva, that whole gang there. And then obviously with Trans-Siberian Orchestra and Paul O'Neill. I've been sitting back and listening and watching and learning for a long time. And I just figured this is, if I'm going to do this, I need to get on it. So yeah. I took the took the initiative. I had the right people in place. The timing all worked out, and uh, and we got it done. You're 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 the you're the new Mike Portnoy now. You know, like you're the <laughs> you're the band leader, and I think that's so cool, man. That that um, you know the impetus is not from another drummer who's a band leader, but really um, as a tribute uh, to the friend that you lost, which is so cool. And and the other element to it, which I love, is, um, you know, I, I'm into all the packaging, the artwork, and all that kind of stuff. Natalie, as well, is very artistically inclined. We like physical product. Please put up um, the still of the album cover. You're with Rat Pack Records, who are great friends of this show, because they do such a great job. So imagine you have that on vinyl you know awesome. and it's a fold out and you have you know i don't you know i don't have the vinyl yet but you know we it's probably colored vinyl there's probably different versions of it you probably get no one rat pack you get a cd and a cassette with it so what's the best place for people if they want the physical product especially we all know where to get the downloads and the streams where do we get this physical product well you can get it through rat pack records okay. uh also amazon like you said digitally it's everywhere uh, you know, you can look me up on, on Facebook, on my Facebook page, the Alter Rain Facebook page. Uh, we certainly hope to get vinyl and cassette and, and a lot of things happening with this. I, uh, you know, Joel Bryan at Rat Pack, he, uh, he normally does not sign new projects. And I, I turned him on to this music. He was, he was quite impressed. And he said, you know, Jeff, I'm willing to work with you on this. Here again, you know, with COVID last year and, and 
it just really kind of messed so many things up. So it kind of messed up our release time. You know, some of the some of the promotion and things like that got. Plus, I was doing some stuff with TSO. You know, not to make excuses, but we've uh, we we got a great Joe put out a great package when we first released this, and and hopefully, you know, we'll get a vinyl and cassette out. I'm I'm working on the second album. We'll get one done we'll definitely the package with that. Um, yeah, let's get that because you, that's too cool. Like that's, you know, you put that in a frame and put it on your wall. Like that, that's to me, that album art is, cool. it is artwork, you know, um, yes. like, just like the tattoos on, on your body and, you know, a, a, any artwork, you know, that's good is great artwork. I agree completely. And so what the canvas is. And then of course, you know, you have the music to back it up. So now you mentioned some people on the way, Joel Hoekstra, Zach Stevens, TSO. So let's, we're going to play a little six degrees of jeff played because you do have a pretty incestuous career you mentioned you played in a band called wicked witch which i'm guessing wicked had two k's and witch had a y because that's that's what you did back in the 80s uh if I, maybe i'm wrong i'm just imagining no, I, that I, honestly it's spelled the way it's spelled the way it's it should be oh, okay. but, but then we got sued by a band out of florida that spelled their name just like you said it so, okay. <laughs> years later, we tried re-releasing some of the music, and we get a we get a cease and desist from this girl, and uh, it's like, okay, we'll 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 do something different. <laughs> she really but, uh, she was a wicked witch. She she tried to sue you. Be. And uh, and so the singer of that band was Zach Stevens. Uh, you you know you, obviously you go on and, and you play with with Sabotage. Um, Zach Stevens eventually comes over and sings for Sabotage, and then you both end up in TSO together. <laughs> so it's been like a little bit of a traveling thing. Like he's Zach's kind of followed behind you or parallel to you, and then in the middle you, you had uh, Metal Church in there as well. Yeah, actually, it's the other way around. Zach ended up get, getting the gig singing with Sabotage first. He joined them in, in uh, 1992. So when he left the Wicked Witch Project, Matt and I lost a great singer. And obviously, at that time, grunge was the new thing. Yeah, Everything changed. You know, everything in the scene, everything in the business changed towards that. So, so this is when I kind of... Like, all right, I've been in Boston for 10 years. I moved back to upstate New York. Zach Stevens did uh, the Edge of Thorns record with Sabotage. That was his first release with the band. And unfortunately, not long after that, Chris Oliva, the lead guitarist in Sabotage, died in a car accident. That's right, yep. Um, so a couple months later, I called Zach to see, you know, how he was and what was going on. Would you want to maybe revisit the old project? And he said at that point, Paul O'Neill and John Oliva had committed to keeping Sabotage alive. Uh, they brought in Alex Skolnick on guitar, and the original drummer, Steve Wachholz, had left the band, and Zach said, these guys want to hire you. So I was like, holy crap. So I, I'm, in, I'm in upstate New York, not expecting this at all. And next thing you know, a couple months later, I'm on tour with the band, and I've been there since 1994. Right. And then the other six degrees of, of, of Jeff Plate is that Sabotage, obviously, uh, Chris Caffrey, guitar oh. player from there, is one of the creative directors of Trans-Siberian Orchestra. For people who don't know with TSO, um, you know, it started out as this kind of rock you know, metal Christmas show um, <laughs> that 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 only played obviously during the holiday season, but has up until COVID become a full time thing. Is so much so that you have a West Coast band and an East Coast band, um, and they sell out every show sells out every arena in the country. And so Jeff obviously was has been a part of that for the last bunch of years as well. And that that must be a major thrill to play in front of packed arenas every night it's unbelievable and and christmas eve sarajevo 1224 is is the song that's the hit song that still today drives the trans-siberian orchestra that was first released on a sabotage record called dead winter dead yep so so when that song became a hit commercially it really took off in a completely different direction than what sabotage was at the time um paul o'neill john oliva and the management team decided Let's focus on this Trans-Siberian Orchestra project 
an idea that Paul O'Neill had in his head for years. So yes, this thing, we, we released uh, several records. We started touring in 1999, uh, playing to a thousand people in small theaters. And then all of a sudden this thing just blew up like five years later. We're doing arenas all across the country, twice a day, selling them out, both, both shows. It's, so between the East Coast and the West Coast, we play to close to a million people a year. Um, it really is amazing what has happened with this. And I mean, I, I've sat in the middle of it the whole time, but, but I, I've had the pleasure of working with like the likes of Alex Skolnick, uh, Mark Wood, electric violinist, Al Petrelli, Jeff Scott Soto, Russell Allen. There's so many awesome people that are involved with TSO. And uh, yeah, up until COVID, we had never missed a show. So we'd been touring straight for 21 years, every November, December, made it happen every show. And, and obviously last year we had to, we had to cancel everything. So so let's hope everything straightens out and get back on the road this year. Yeah, I know. Now, now, like as comics, Natalie and I play. You know, we got an early show and a late show. You know, on the yeah. on the weekend of the comedy clubs, they have early and late shows in arenas. That's amazing. <laughs> like we're, we'll play at four o'clock and then again at eight o'clock, and it'll be twenty thousand new people. Trans Siberian Orchestra. It's, it's just uh, it, it it just became this incredible thing. Now it, maybe because I'm in this lawsuit state of mind, but was there any ever any problems from the Trans Siberian Rail? Road? <laughs> um, no, you know, I was around first, by the way. Yes, they were. I, honestly, this this is where Paul O'Neill, Paul O'Neill got the idea for the name. Yeah, of course. He, he, he rolled the he rode the Trans Siberian Rail, Railway uh, through Siberia and Russia. He, he did the whole trip one time, and he he said it just blew his mind. And the, and this is really how the idea of TSO came about. Um, but no, we never, we never had any problems with that. It was, uh, I, I, I think being compared to Mannheim Steamroller at first was, was our biggest issue, but that was, uh, soon to be, uh, kind of pushed aside. Well, dude, man, you, you've had such an amazing career and, uh, and we're going to, we'll go out on a, a metal church video just to give people a taste of it. But, but I, but I just, I want to just to give you one more thing for people, you know, who they got a little taste of all terrain at the top, but you know, what's your, what's your pitch on like for people who like, I, I hate to do it that way, but like, what's a, wh when you listen to the album, what do you hear? Um, it's melodic. It's heavy. Uh, it's definitely progressive at times. Yep. Um, at the same time, it also has some real commercial elements. Um, you know, I did all the lyrics for the record. And, and like I said, I'm not a kid anymore. This <laughs> this isn't about chasing girls and fast cars and partying. This is kind of about, yeah. you know, being at this point in my life where uh, you need to be thankful and respectful of what's going on around you and, and, and what's got you where you are. So there's, there's a real positive theme to everything. I think musically, it's it's fantastic, and I mean, I'll, I'll give so much credit to the people that I worked with in the, in this, you know, my band members. Everybody really stepped up and just did a kick-ass job on this record. So there's really something here for everybody. I mean, yeah. you, you know, from Metal Church, you know, from Sabotage and TSO, you can hear that in there if you want to. I, I don't really hear it myself, but this is this is an accumulation of me being a teenage kid listening to kiss and everything in between all the way up until now so yeah uh it, it's a labor of love it's it really was something i'm, I'm very very proud of that, I, that i've done but yeah if you're a musician all of the above I, I think there's something on this record for you and uh like i said i'm very very proud of it yeah you should be man and i i think you you hit the nail on the head with that um and i'm so i i love that you know hometown guys are, are getting their due during the pandemic because like i said you guys are sort of just depending on people who are close and and as we all know there's so many amazing musicians that people don't know anything about that are getting a little bit of the spotlight now uh the record you made is fantastic you're not just a drummer you're now a composer um and and you wrote all the lyrics which is uh, incredible and um rat pack records is where you find the album let's get this thing out on vinyl like i said and uh, hopefully if we can i know you're working on the next one already so maybe by the time the second one comes out you can get this thing out on the road and play this live for some people and um man i'm just uh, i'm super pumped for you man you've been a good friend over the years and you're not getting older look at the hair on you bro come on man you're still a kid 
I've been lucky. This is uh, this is one attribute that I did get from my mother was the hair. I mean, she still got this full <laughs> head of hair. It's, it's awesome. So uh, yeah, I've uh, I haven't driven myself crazy to the point of uh, going bald yet. But uh, hey, you never know. Uh, the, this this world is. Well, the, this, the, the music business can make you lose hair for sure. My God, it is so upside down <laughs> and insane. It really is. But thank you so much. And, and yeah, I hope to get this thing out live. I think this music live will, will really, really do well. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, very powerful stuff. All right. Let's take him out on some metal church there and say uh, thank you so much to our friend Jeff Plate, man. And uh